In a recent video, I went over a couple of different customized Windows 11 installs and how small they are, how performant they are, and that got me wondering, what is the smallest Linux distro that I can find? And it's gotta be a singular Linux distro, not one with different flavors or whatever, and it's gotta be something with a graphical user interface. And so some of you might pop in with Puppy Linux. Puppy Linux is the smallest and or, you know, most performant Linux distro but it's not a singular distro. If you go to the site, there's actually three different flavors to it. So to keep with my mission of a singular distro, Lubuntu. Lubuntu actually ends up being the most performant and very small Linux distro. So I wanna show you guys how to find and install Lubuntu Linux. And then afterwards, I wanna show you the install size and the performance, the uh, resource usage. Okay, so we open our browser. We just search Lubuntu. It's this first one here. And up here, we go to downloads. So I personally like to use the long-term service option. If there's one available, that's what this means, LTS, long-term service. And so I go with this one. So we click desktop 64 down here to download. And then we just scroll down and you're just looking for the biggest size. That's the one that's the ISO, or you can search for it here and just look, it says .ISO right there. So that's the one you wanna download. Okay, so in my file explorer here in my downloads, here is my Lubuntu ISO. So now we need the software to flash the ISO onto a flash drive. So you're gonna need a flash drive that you don't mind losing everything on or that's already empty because this flashing process will delete everything on your flash drive. So go ahead and open your browser. We're searching for Rufus. It's this one right here, rufus.ie. You just scroll down a bit and it's the top one, rufus4.9.exe. So here's Rufus in our downloads. You just right click, run as administrator, and you just have to make sure that the correct device is selected here. So if you have multiple flash drives or an external hard drive or something, just make sure that you have the right device selected here. If you see a pop-up like this, it just wants to install an update basically, so you can click yes. All right, so we need to select our ISO, so click select, and right there in your downloads, Lubuntu, and open. And so we just wanna leave all the settings as default here and click start. And so when this pops up, you want the recommended settings, so leave recommended and click OK. And so you get this pop-up here saying everything's gonna be deleted, so you click OK. We realize everything is going to be deleted, and we just wait for it to finish. Okay, so our flash drive is ready, so we can click close. And so from here, I'm gonna be working on a virtual machine. I just wanted to do that flash drive process because that would be what most people at home would use. Just make sure you look up the boot menu key for your motherboard. And then when you go to start up your computer to install, just be mashing that boot menu key until the boot menu pops up. You arrow key up to the correct flash drive that you set up, you, you hit enter, and then it'll boot into the installer. Okay, so when you get into the installer right here, you just hit enter to try or install Lubuntu. All right, so here we are in the installer. Just make sure you select your correct language. I'm in the United States, so I leave it on that. It shows that I'm connected to the internet, and then you can click install. Okay, so again, it just confirms your language. So just select the correct one for you and click next. So here we're just making sure our time zone and dating is correct. So just make sure that you select your correct time zone. If you need to change the uh, language or dating, then change it and then click next. And for me, I'm in the US here. So US default keyboard layout is fine for me. If you need to change it, do so and click next. And so for the installation mode, we have three different options, full install, normal install, minimal. So only the minimal desktop environment here for minimal, normal installation. You get the web browser, some utilities, some office software games and media players. And for the full install, you get all applications in the normal install plus extra third party packages listed below. And so it's referring to these packages down here. So you can just choose whatever one you want here, whatever one sounds best for you. I'm showcasing the minimal install here though, because I want to showcase just how small and how performant it is. So I select minimal install here, and then I click this little checkbox to download and install updates at the end or after the installation, and then click next. And manual partitioning is beyond the scope of this tutorial here, this guide. So we're just going to do the default erase disk and then click next. This is where you enter your name, your login name, the name of the computer and your password. So just fill out all that information and click next. And this is just confirming all of the settings that we chose earlier. And so we just click install when we're ready and then install now. Now we just wait for the install. I just wanna mention it can look like it's hanging here at this step where it says it's performing contextual processes job. That's normal, at least for the past three or four installs of this that I've done in testing. So just wait, it isn't frozen, it will finish eventually. 
Okay, so install is done. We leave the restart now checked. So it'll just automatically restart and we click done. It's gonna ask us to remove the installation media. So just pull out your flash drive now and then hit enter. All right, so this is the login screen for Lubuntu. So just go ahead and log in. And here we are on the Lubuntu desktop. So here in the bottom right, we've got our time and date stuff. We've got our notification tray. We've got our ethernet showing our connection status to the internet. We've got our sound. We've got our removable media slash device manager. And then over here, we've got a quick access show desktop button. If you have a bunch of windows open, we've got our it's essentially file manager, right? Our file explorer. So we open this up to see all our, our files and folders. And then over here, we have multiple desktops that you can use basically for workflow. So you can have windows open on each desktop. But since I showed you guys the minimal install, we've got to do something real quick. So we open our Q terminal. We're just going to do a sudo apt get update, put in our password, just let that update real quick. Then we do a sudo apt get install QPS. And so this is the tool that I'm using to kind of showcase the performance here. So we go into our essentially start button, go to system tools and QPS. And so now I can show you guys how much CPU usage and RAM usage this thing uses. So CPU around 1.6%, although I have seen lower, it will pop down lower sometimes around like 0.8 I've seen. And then for the memory, we are using 518 megabytes out of 7,941. So let me show you that in gigabytes. So I did the math to get that broken into gigabytes. And so we're basically, we're almost perfectly using half a gigabyte out of 7.7 .7 gigabytes of RAM. Now we'll open our file manager. And so we have 48.9 gigabytes total drive space. We have free space of 39.8. If we subtract the free space from the total, we get 9.1 gigabytes as our total install size. That's very small. It's not the smallest I've ever seen for a GUI operating system, but it is very, very small. For the default size of Windows 11, it's like a, over 20 gigabytes or something like that. So this is less than half that size. And I just wanted to give you guys an idea, even if you did that full installation with everything, all of the third-party tools and everything, you're getting CPU usage of 0.8% still, sometimes getting up to around 2%, and then memory usage of 594 megabytes. So still not very much more than the very minimal install. I just did the math there to get it back into gigabytes and it's 0.58 gigabytes out of 7.7. .7. So again, very, very lightweight on the resource usage when idling. And again, this is our full install, right? This is with all the third-party tools. And even then, our install size is 14 gigabytes. 14 gigabytes. That's still far less than the default size for the Windows 11 install of like over 20. So what did we find? Well, Lubuntu Linux is not exactly the smallest install size in terms of a GUI OS, considering the Windows X Lite install is like 4.6 gigabytes or something like that. But Windows X Lite is a bit more sketchy because it is a fully compiled, customized OS of Windows from some random person that we don't know. So at the very least, Lubuntu Linux being an open source operating system that is reputable, it's a lot more reassuring in that regard. But it's when we get into the idled resource usage that it gets really impressive. That minimal install running at 0.5 gigabytes of RAM, 0.5 gigabytes of RAM is crazy. That is so small. So this thing will run like a dream for anybody with older hardware or just very minimal hardware or just anybody who likes knowing that their OS is taking up the least resources possible. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a definitely an interesting deep dive into a very, very resource efficient OS. I'm definitely way more interested in Lubuntu Linux myself as possibly a daily driver. Let me know what you guys think, what OS that you prefer, and I will see you in the next video.